Imagine what it would be like to be pressed to death. It would involve being pinned to the ground with stakes, a plank laid across you, and then stone upon stone piled on top. It would take a long, painful while. That was the fate of the man who is commemorated here, Giles Corey, pressed to death, September 19, 1692. His crime, his alleged crime, witchcraft, his accusers, five young girls, the youngest, just 11. Now, Corey was not the only one to meet the swift justice of the Salem court. 18 others, friends and neighbors of their accusers, were tried, found guilty, and hanged. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm wholly innocent of such wickedness. God knows I am innocent. I do plead not guilty. I can deny it to my dying day. I am no witch. That's what they said to those judges. What would you have said? Salem is known for the witch trials, a notoriety the city encourages. Even the police cars have a flying witch painted on the doors. But it was seafaring that built this town. From its beginnings as a fishing village in 1626, Salem grew to be one of the richest towns in the United States by the late 1700s. Now, just imagine the scene. Along the shoreline, wharves of all description, jammed with warehouses, crowded with stevedores, riggers, and sailors from all over the world. Salem ships span the globe. China, Zanzibar, India, Sumatra, and in their holds, tea, ivory, furs, and spices, luxury goods of all description. Now, one ship even brought home a live elephant, the first one ever seen in America. Now, it's no coincidence that the federal government located the Custom House here at the base of Derby Wharf. Salem merchants accumulated vast fortunes on their seaborne trade, and the government wanted its peace. Some things never change. With their new wealth, Salem merchants and captains built these magnificent houses. We're on one of the great streets of America, Chestnut Street. And the houses are in the federal style. Big, fine, but restrained. This is Puritan territory, after all. Ah, oh, isn't this splendid? The scale, the color, the texture. Is it any wonder the whole street has been designated a National Historic Landmark? Now, while the merchants of Chestnut Street relaxed in their mansions, the counting of cargo continued down here at the port. It wasn't always the most stimulating work, and no one knew that better than Salem's native son, Nathaniel Hawthorne. He was born in this house on the 4th of July, 1804. And by the time he was a surveyor down at the Custom House, foreign trade had fallen off, and there was precious little to do. He was, by his own admission, bored to distraction. Fortunately for him and for literature, Hawthorne developed an alternate career. Now this is the house he made famous, the House of the Seven Gables. His cousin Susie lived here, and she'd tell him stories that fired his imagination. The success of his books could not have come at a better time, for after only three years at the Custom House, Hawthorne lost his job, but perhaps by then, he didn't care. Salem is a city that cares about its history, and no one cares more than the folks at the Peabody Essex Museum. It is a great museum, and the oldest in the United States. Inside, you'll see the original transcripts from the witch trials, along with one of the country's greatest collection of maritime art, and the world's largest collection of Asian export art, silver, porcelain, and furniture, all the luxury items that made Salem rich. Are you as convinced as I am? This is a great town. Now, let's see if we can find a house here. <laughs>